Hey everyone, if you ever got to practice machine learning, you probably have encountered some terms from the world of information theory. Cross entropy and KL divergence are used extensively in many models and if you read a paper describing a new model that uses such a concept, it will be expected that you understand these terms at the get-go. I looked far and wide across Google and YouTube, but could not find a decent source that will give a hit-the-ground running introduction to the main ideas and formulas of the field. I hope this video will fill this gap. Our story begins, like many stories do, with a single coin flip. It can land on hands or tails with equal probability. This probability distribution has inherent uncertainty within it. Before we toss the coin, we have no hypothesis on the result as the outcomes are equally likely. But after it, we will have a result that we would like to communicate to others. Let's imagine that you needed to tell a friend about the result of the coin flip. You cannot, however, talk to this friend directly. Instead, you have to encode the result and send it through a cable. This cable accepts only discrete units of information that can be 0 or 1. These units of information are the most basic concept of information theory. They are called bits. So, how many bits of information do you need to send to your friend in order for him to know the side the coin landed on? Well, only one. Send a zero if it landed on heads and one if tails. Now, let's consider a slightly more complicated experiment. Two coin tosses. How many bits will you need to convey the result now? Well, since there are four possible outcomes, you will need two bits of information. For example, if the result is tails, then heads, we will send one, then zero. But for two heads, we will send two zeros. As we tackle more and more complicated experiments, we might want a formula that will give us a notion of the amount of bits needed to convey the result of the experiment. As a sanity check, this formula will need to give the value 1 for a single fair coin flip, 2 for double coin flips, and 0 for a cheater's coin that always lands on the same side. If the outcome is always the same and there is no uncertainty, there is nothing to report and we don't need any bits at all. To measure the uncertainty of an experiment and derive from it the number of bits needed to communicate the result, we use the entropy metric. It's a function that takes in a probability distribution of an experiment and outputs the amount of uncertainty it contains, which is closely related to the amount of bits we need. Let's understand the formula for it applied to a discrete probability distribution called P. For every possible event i of the experiment x, we sum the probability of the event times the log base 2 of the probability. And since log of a number between 0 and 1 is negative, we multiply everything by minus 1 so that the result is positive. To understand the intuition behind it, let's look at the graph of minus p of x times log base 2 of p of x as the probability of an event goes from 0 to 1. Remember that the entropy is just the sum of this quantity for all of the possible events multiplied by minus 1. We can see that events with 0 or 1 probability do not contribute to the sum. Events that can't happen are something that we do not need to allocate bits to communicate, and events that will happen for sure also need no communication. We all already know what will be the result. On the other hand, events that are not sure at all, they might happen and might not with similar probability, add the most to the sum as they increase the uncertainty the most. Let's calculate the formula for our three test cases. Cheater's coin, fair coin, and double coin flips. 
For the cheater's coin, there is only one possible event with probability 1, so the entropy is 0. For the fair coin flip, there are two events with probability of half, and the result is 1. And for the double coin flip, we get 2, so it seems like the formula is working as expected. The final comment about this formula that I want to make is that it measures the uncertainty of the distribution not the exact number of bits we need in order to communicate the result. As we will see, these two quantities are closely related, but not identical. For example, what if our coin was not fair and had higher probability of landing on heads, but still, tails was possible. We still need only one bit of information to convey the result. But, when you carry out the calculation, the entropy is down to 0.876. It makes sense. As one outcome is now more probable, we have less uncertainty. So, the number of bits needed is 1, but the entropy is less than that. How these two are related? Well, the average minimum number of bits needed is always between the entropy and the entropy plus 1, which gives us a really narrow range. The concept of entropy can be expanded to the statistical interactions between different random variables. I assume you know what random variables are, but if not, take a look at the video I will link to in the description. One key concept from statistics is the joint distribution of two random variables. At the end, it's just a new random variable that tells us the probability of each combination of results of x and y. Since it can be treated as a usual random variable, we can apply the idea of entropy just the same way. We call it the joint entropy of x and y. It's all the same. We iterate over each combination of x and y events and take the product of their probabilities and log probabilities. Similarly, we can think about the notion of conditional entropy, which is a parallel to the probabilistic concept of conditional probability. The idea is to take the entropy of x, given we know the result of y, and average this over all of the possible values of y weighted by their probability. The beauty of these definitions is apparent from the way they interact with each other. The joint entropy of x and y is equal to the entropy of one of them by itself, plus the conditional entropy of the other conditioned on the first one. Now, before we move on, let's dive a bit deeper into codes and conveying the result of an experiment. This is necessary to understand the next few concepts. We will begin with a short story. Imagine a scenario in which you are an enthusiastic beard watcher. Each Sunday, you and your friend are going to watch the different colors of beards together as they fly near the lake close to your town. One day, your friend is sick and cannot come with you. To make him feel better, you promise that every time you will see a beard, you will communicate the color of the beard back to him. The only issue is that the only communication device you have available happens to be a very old transmitter that can only transmit array of bits, strings of zeros and ones. Even worse, it has very limited battery life which forces you to be thoughtful about how you spend your bits. Now, the birds at the lake have only three possible colors, red, blue and green. Before you leave your friend and go beard watching, you both agree on a code. Based on your experience, you believe red and blue birds are more common than green birds. Because of that, red will get the code of a single zero and blue a single one. Green birds will get a code of two ones. This way, most of the time you will only need to use a single bit to convey the information, and only rarely two. To put it in a slightly more formal terms, you believe that there is some underlying probability distribution of the color of the birds. High probability for red and blue, and lower probability for green. Let's call this distribution Q. Based on this distribution, you optimized your code so that you will need the minimum amount of bits. 
Well, the minimum expected number of bits. If by chance you will encounter many green birds today, this code won't work well. But it's an unlikely scenario based on Q, the probability distribution you believe in. Unlikely scenario, unless. Unless you are wrong about the probability distribution. Imagine that something changed at the world. For example, a new type of green bird appeared at the lake, and now green birds are actually the most common. Now, there is a new probability distribution for beard colors. Let's call it P. You are not aware of this change and still believe at a distribution Q. The code you use is not optimized for this other distribution P, and therefore you will need, on average, more bits. The number of bits you will need, on average, for using a code optimized for Q while in reality the distribution is P, is called the cross entropy. You might notice that I used the same notation for cross entropy, capital H, as I did for the entropy and joint entropy. That's because mathematicians are bad at naming stuff. The cross entropy has two parts. The amount of bits you would need for P if you were optimizing for it, which is approximately the entropy of P, and a penalty for using a code which is optimized for a different distribution, Q. This extra cost is called the KL divergence. Here is the formula for the KL divergence. It's very similar to entropy, only that now we multiply the probability of the events of P by the log of the ratio between this probability and the probability of the same event in distribution Q. Notice that if P and Q are identical, the log will always evaluate to zero, so the whole sum is zero. It makes sense. If they are identical, the code that was optimized for Q is also optimized for P, so no penalty is needed. The more different the distributions are, the higher the divergence will be. Therefore, it is commonly used as a measure of the distance between distributions. That being said, it is technically not a distance measure, since it is not symmetrical. By summing both terms, the entropy of P and the KL divergence for P and Q, and applying some simple algebra, we get the formula for the cross entropy. Another useful term, which is a basic notion in information theory and is closely related to everything we learned so far, is the mutual information. It is the reduction of uncertainty in one random variable that we get by knowing the value of another. Intuitively, it measures the dependence between two distributions. We define it as a special case of the KL divergence, where the two probabilities in question are the joint distribution of the random variables x and y and the product of their marginal distributions. Remember that if x and y are completely independent, these two are identical, and the mutual information is zero. It means that there is no reduction in uncertainty in x by knowing y. And that's basically it. These are the basic building blocks of information theory. I might do sequels to this video in the future with more advanced stuff. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you in the next video.